Hi everyone, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing and thank you for sharing my videos. In today's video, I'm going to uncover the mystery behind the big aircraft abandoned in the United Arab Emirates. It is located somewhere in the United Arab Emirates in an emirate called Umul Kuwain. If you have ever seen this plane or have heard of it, you're probably wondering why was this plane abandoned here? Why did it land here? Was it an emergency landing? Was it intended? Why has it been abandoned for over 20 years? All those questions and much more in this video. The plane I'm talking about is located in Umul Kuwain, next to Barracuda Beach Resort along E11 Highway. It has a big advert of Palm Beach Hotel on its side. It is another strange landmark in the United Arab Emirates that remains unexplained and many people passing by are wondering why, who, what and all these questions keep coming up whenever people are seeing it for the first time. Sand, wind, rain and heat have not been kind to this plane for over 20 years. The engines have long gone. The tires and the landing gear have sunk into the sand. Birds have built nests in the plane and on the wings and almost anywhere they can find space to fit their nests or their families. The nearby airfield is unequally bad condition. The runway, the hangars and offices have all been abandoned. The small airfield used to operate small light flights for only skydivers. However, there were a number of accidents in the past. That's why officials decided to close the airfield because most of the operations were unofficial and were illegal. Some of the instructors moved on to skydive Dubai. Now back to the abandoned plane. It's a Russian plane known as Iloshin or abbreviated as IL-76. The aircraft was built for the Soviet Air Forces in 1975. It was designed for remote areas in the Soviet Union. The plane entered service probably in the late 1970s or early 1980s. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, this aircraft was operated by the Russian Air Forces until the early, until late 1990s. The plane was then registered to Air Case in 19. Uh, 97. The plane was then registered with Air Pass until 1998. Later on, the plane was then registered to Central African Airlines from 1998 to 2000. It is important to note that two of these airlines, the Air Case and the Central African Airline, were connected to one of the most notorious arms dealers of the time, the man named Victor Boot. With breaking news, the man dubbed the Merchant of Death, sentenced to 25 years in federal court just a short time ago, Russian businessman Vic B Victor Boot was found guilty back in November for selling millions of dollars worth of weapons to South American terrorists. Victor is believed to have operated between Sharjah and Ras al Khaimah in the 1990s. He owned a number of planes that used to transport cargo and arms from Eastern Europe via the Middle East to Africa. In the early 2000s, that is, in the early 2000s, the United Arab Emirates banned Victor from entering into the United Arab Emirates. And he is now currently serving a 25 years jail sentence. Why am I talking about Victor Bot? This plane is believed to be one of his planes that he operated. Maybe after he was banned from entering UAE, this plane was on its way to land somewhere. It could be something about this plane. The plane landed in its current location between 1999 and 2000. The exact date is not known, but that is within those two years. At the same time, when Victor Bolt was banned from entering United Arab Emirates, there's a possibility that he had some connections with this plane because it was registered in two of the airlines that used to work with Victor Bolt. Now, there are four 
other theories about why this plane is in its current location. The plane landed accidentally. It is believed that maybe the pilot mistook this air, small airfield for another airfield. That's one of the theories. The second theory is that someone had purchased this plane to convert it into a hotel or cafe. The third theory is that uh, this plane was headed for a major airport in the Northern Emirates. Maybe Ras Al Khaimah, Omol Kwein, or Sharjah. But the pilot and the plane were denied permission to land on the airfield. So because the plane was running out of fuel, the pilot had no option but to land it at the small near airfield nearby, which was not even enough to accommodate such a big plane. But because it was originally designed to operate on even unpaved runways, it managed to land safely along uh, just nearby the small airfield. The fourth theory is that someone had purchased this plane for scrap. So it was flown in from a nearby airport and landed here. And after taking out all the necessary, all the important parts of the plane, then it was abandoned. So those are the four theories surrounding this, the mystery of this plane. No one is very sure of which is which, according to the research I've done. But the plane is still there. You can go visit it if you are in the United Arab Emirates. But at the moment, there's a caution you're not allowed to approach. You're not allowed to get too close to that plane. It could be because of COVID-19. You don't want people to get into it and start. Uh, maybe it could be another way people spread COVID-19. Thank you for watching. If this was your first time, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Like the video, share it. Thanks. See you in the next video. Well, uh, Liz, as you say, Victor Boot got the minimum expected sentence, 25 years behind bars. His defense was uh, trying to get the judge to drop all charges against him. The prosecution was pushing, on the other hand, for a life sentence behind bars. Considering the four charges made against him, Victor Boot ended up getting a quarter of a century behind bars. And it's important to say that when the trial kick started today, when the hearing kick started, Victor Boot seemed to be in a pretty good mood. He gave a thumbs up to his wife, Allah. He was smiling. And uh, today was actually the first time he addressed the court throughout the trial. He did speak in Russian through an interpreter for the first time because before he said he was an innocent man, he continues to say he's an innocent man, and he said he did not need to prove anything to the courtroom. But today he did speak. Uh, he said the truth is known to these people as he pointed to uh, agents of the Drug Enforcement Administration. Who